early, Percy. Best part of the day, though. Some will never see it. No. Well, it's none of my business, but I bet them curtains stay drawn till mid-morning. Go on then, Percy. Give us a clue. Students. When they have time to study, the Lord only knows. Oh, I see. You're complaining about something. Now, is this just for me, or shall I pass it on to somebody? I'm not complaining. No, I'm just saying. No. I mean, I should have known you wouldn't complain, shouldn't I? I mean, when have you ever? Eh, Percy? All right, you. Sit yourself down, eat your breakfast, and please don't give me any lip. I'm really not in the mood. Breakfast? What do you expect me to do? Eat the cloth? It's coming. Well, then. Hardly setting a terribly good example to the younger generation now, are we? Hey, what did I say? All right. Not another word. Good. But, I mean, honestly, police knocking at the door. Andy! I hope they'll take into consideration, you know. I'm, uh, I'm sorry I turned out badger on her, but I seem to come from a long line of motoring offenders. Ha, uh ha, -huh. Where's your brother? Oh, he took when Saturday comes into the toilet. He'll, uh, yeah, he'll probably be gone sometime, yeah. This is great. Love you for that. And you can stop cheeking your dick. Hey, the two of them thrive on it. Have you not noticed every time we're in trouble, out comes the wit? I don't see why you're in trouble, though. I mean, it was old Duckworth that was riding it. Listen, the list's as long as your arm. I mean, no tax, no MOT, no insurance, no horn. Permitting him to ride it, aiding and abetting it, it goes on and on. It was my fault. I persuaded you to let Jack ride it. I should have kept quiet. Liz, it wasn't your fault, love. It's my fault. I mean, it's my vehicle. My fault. Ask a policeman. It's Duckworth's fault and all. <laughs> you can bet Jack will try and wriggle out of it, that's for sure. But we can still take out on Wasteland. What's that supposed to mean? Well, you only need tax and MOT and that for roads, don't you? Why don't we take it out later on tonight? Well, you listen to him, eh? He wants to get me done for me second offence. I haven't even been done for me first yet. Don't at all. I just want to ride on the bike. You could have given me a shout. Oh, well, you're gone, sorry. It's OK. If I'm late, I'm dead. Who'd care? Me, you are rent. Oh, yeah, speaking of which, I've told Rob Whitworth he can keep on the settee tonight. Well, why? He's got Mrs Johnson's flat. Well, it's not a flat, it's a garden shed. Anyway, she slung him out. Well, he's not coming here. Jenny, he's stuck. I don't care if he's stuck, he's not coming here. Look, I'm late. I'll catch you at the poly, OK? I mean you, Flick. Bye. Come on, come on. Get round there and get him told. Right, right, dear. Away. Calls himself a neighbour. Cracking on its half fault. We'll get the blame and then he'll be putting in for compensation. It's only next door, Vera. Yeah, well, he's still a tour act. I've been here, you. Are you coming, Vera? No, I'm not. Not till I see him knock on that door. I'm in my pyjamas. Do you think that's a wise idea? Why so great slippers on? No, no, I didn't mean that. I mean, do you think it's a wise idea for Jack to confront Mr MacDonald? Of course. No, because I was thinking, now we're in this subjudice situation, I think it'd be wiser if uh, Jack didn't say anything at this present time. I think he's got a point there. See, because at this present time, whatever Jack says could be used in evidence against him. He's not daft, that lad. So you're not going to do out then? Well, it makes sense, doesn't it? I don't want to say something that'll make it worse, do yeah, I? Yeah, well, you can put his windows in. Good morning, Jack. Good morning. You and I need to have a quick word, don't we? No comment, no comment. I'm waiting, Jack. Good man. I'm saying nothing. I'm not asking you to say anything, Jack. I'm just giving you fair warning and fair word. You were riding the bike, so you're in on this, and I don't want you trying to slide out of it. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? No comment. I'm not asking you to comment, Jack. I'm asking you, do you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Good man. You never told me there was no insurance. Oh, come on, Jack. How could I be insured? Don't blame me. I was asked supposed to know. Well, you've got a brain, haven't you? No comment. Oh, God. Look, what is this no comment business? I am taking advice. You what? I have been given advice. What? Professional advice? Very professional. Well, well, well. It doesn't take you very long, does it, eh? No comment. Fine. Right, if that's the way you want to play it, Jack, then that's the way we'll play it. You'll be hearing from me. You're late. Oh, don't start. I've been queuing 15 minutes in that butcher's. Oh, there's a freezer full of food. Why do you want more? Look, what's the matter with you? What I bring in for dinners, that's my department. I mean, what's, what's your trouble, Alec? It's the trouble and the strife. 
I mean, why can't she be a bit adventurous, Betty? I mean, theme pubs are the in thing. Why do I have to drag her kicking and screaming into the future, Betty? Why do you need to? Well, I mean, apart from anything else, it'd suit her down to the ground. Mm. Can't you just see her, Betty? I mean, she always looks marvellous, of course, but little black cocktail number, long cigarette holder, mood lighting reflected in her diamante, slow jazz, the sophisticated banter of well-heeled clientele. Drug sniffing. Dro what? It's what they're all about, isn't it, these young'uns? Don't be so absurd, Betty. Look, if you ask me, I think this place is all right as it is. Yes, well, of course, I wouldn't expect you to be adventurous, Betty. Well, just don't expect me to put on the ten-gallon hat. Go on, get it, kids. <laughs> I'm going. What's for lunch? Toad in the hole. Toad in the hole? What's wrong with your hot pot? I am being adventurous. <laughs> oh, my God, I thought you'd gone to work. What's this? Guilty conscience, eh? Oh, chance would be a fine thing. What are you doing? Well, you'll never guess what old wooden top's done next door. What? Well, he's phoned a solicitor, haven't he? Why? Well, why do you think he wants to dump it all on me? Oh, God. Here we go. Yeah, neighbour trouble. So what do we do? Well, we fight fire with fire. I'm going to phone a solicitor. Look, it's got nothing to do with Rita. I just don't want him there. He's got nowhere else to go. Flick, he'll find somewhere. He's not going to be sleeping on the park bench. So what's wrong with him coming to ours? Because if he comes, the rest will come. And what rest would that be? Look, as soon as it gets around that he's been keeping with us, we'll be running a DOS house before we know it. Rod Whitworth is a bum. He's homeless. He's still a bum. You're so hard. Look, he's stuck for a bed. It's probably just for a couple of nights until he sorts himself out. Probably only one. Look, if Rod Whitworth gets his foot in the door, he'll be there forever. I promise you he won't. Why are you so keen anyway? Do you fancy him or something? Oh, God, think of something else, can't you, Jen? Think of something original. I can't help the way I feel, can I? Well, you'll come round to it, that's all I'm saying. You know, give it a try. I've no choice, have I? But what when I've tried, Alec? Do I go to Newton and Ridley and say, no thanks, I like it the way it was? Will they come round and rip out the New York speakeasy and turn it back into the Rover? Well, Will the Eckers like? They convert it, we're stuck with it. It'll be more fitting. For who? Well, for you. I mean, instead of pulling mucky grape pints, you'll be shaking cocktails. Oh, Alec. Will I have to wear star spangled knickers and all? We were beginning to think this was the Marie Celeste, Alec. Where's Jack? I think he's fallen overboard. Oh, what, what, what are you having then? Uh, we'll just have two tonics, please. Right. Where have you been? I thought you were swimming for shore. Like bottles, Alec. I've got short. It's not the only thing you're short of, two tonics. Hey, got an idea. Your Jim gives me the more bike back, and I shoulder the fines. How's that? That bike's worth so much, Jack. Yeah, but well, the fines will cost some more. No, what do you think? I think it was a real snide trick you getting a solicitor. Eh? We're neighbours, aren't we? Surely we could have sorted some it out without a solicitor. You said how about solicitors? You, to Jim this morning. No, I didn't. I said, I have been told to keep stump. Yeah, who oh, by? Curly. Oh, he's dead. So Curly works in a supermarket. Hey, there you are, ladies. That's 82 pounds, please. Oh, oh. will you have one with us, Alec? <laughs> yes, thank you, love. Yeah. Keep the change out of this. <laughs> You see, they're popular. Well, of course they're popular, Betty. They're different. That's what we want, something different. Clam chowder and hominy grits tomorrow. Pop, pop. Well, yeah, honestly, the trouble I have dragging my staff in the 20th century, you wouldn't believe. My dear, you know what I'm talking about, don't you, Rita? You've taken on bigger and brighter premises. You can see the way. Bet's still not keen. Uh, she'll come round to it couple of months you won't know this place. And that's what worries her. Well, it does. I mean, I'll be frank, it does. Well, who can blame her, Alec? I mean, it's not just a pub for Bet. It's her home, her livelihood. I mean, I know it's lunacy, but she's got more at stake than the rest of us. You'll excuse me. 
Come on, let's take the weight off. Yeah. Hi, Audrey. Hello, love. Oh, you get drunk on them, I don't. <laughs> Hi, dear. Audrey. I just want to, uh... Hi, Tom. Hello, love. Well, I just want to say that I'm glad you've come round to it. To what? Uh, Gail told me. She said, you said they should marry her and Martin. Well? You well, know, I know it can't have been easy for you, love, but... Well, I'm, I'm glad you think it's best. For the kids to have a proper father, I mean, it's got to be best for them. That's not why I said it. Oh, well, why? I will not have that child take the name Tilson. It's not fit to bear my son's name, and neither is she. Right, sir. What did you say? Oh, it was a woman. She seemed all right. Yeah, wait till a bill comes in. No, you get half an hour for a fiver. Still, I suppose I lost three hours' work this morning, no matter what way you look at it. And in the end, she couldn't tell me anything. She just took my statement and reassured me. Jack didn't hire a solicitor. <laughs> what do you mean, Lizzie? told me. What did he say? He said he'd taken advice, professional advice. Yeah. Who from? Go on, then. Curly, their lodger. <laughs> Curly? But what does he know about it? As much as us, I should think. Oh, God, another wasted morning. I'll tell you, that family is a liability. Guess what else Jack told me? Go on, then. He says he'll pay the fines if you give him the bike. <laughs> and who's going to pay the hospital bill when I break his nose? <laughs> Take care. care. Draw along. <sighs> Where's Alec? Out somewhere. I don't know. It's going to happen, you know, Bessie. Oh, I. End of everything. Pub, home, living, friends. Could be the end of my marriage. Who knows? You'll cope, though, won't you, lovely? Oh, hell. I'll cope, Betty. It's one thing I can do, isn't it? Flaming while well cold. Yeah. So, uh... So bearing all that in mind, I've reluctantly to tell you we've had second thoughts. That's not unusual, Alec. No? No, a lot of our, well, I'd say most of our tenants decide at some stage they don't feel they can go ahead with major refurbishments. Really? Most eventually do, but I have to say, we'd never force you into change against your will. Oh, you're being very reasonable, Nigel. Work's due to start. Sure. So what happens? Do you, do you cancel? It'd be a great shame, but as I say, we're not going to force things on you. Well, uh, I must say you're being very reasonable, Nigel. <laughs> I do my best. <laughs> I mean, uh, strictly between us, it's, uh, it's the wife, you know. I mean, I'd be very happy to go along with any brewery plans. They've been very good to me over the years, Newton and Ridley. But, well, you know, what would they like? Yes? Uh, well, yeah, you know, conservative, cautious, you might say. Ah. <laughs> I mean, personally, I could quite see his hosting Yankees speakeasy. <laughs> <laughs> Studs Gilroy and his mole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds great fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's not too big, I'm afraid. No, she's not keen. She's not keen at all. <laughs> well, all I can say, it's a great shame, Alec. Well, it, it is, isn't it? Yes. But any road up, uh, thank you for being so understanding. So I uh, have your word, do I, that the refurbishments won't go ahead? No, you have my word, Alec, that neither I nor the brewery would ever force you into a situation you were unhappy with. Well, thank you very much. I couldn't ask for better than that, Nigel. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Alec. Are you coming to this disco tonight? What's the matter? Aren't you speaking to me? Yes. Look, if you're in a huff about Rod Whitworth, Look, you've made your point. You don't want him here. I did get the message. Then why aren't you speaking? I am speaking. God, I was asking, was he coming to the disco? Why? Because if you're not, will you switch my radio, John, please, at half past ten? You're going then, are you? Yeah. OK, I'll switch it on. Why aren't you going? Because I've got work to do. Never stopped you before. 
It was a joke. Look, I'm sorry about Rod. Honestly, I am, but I know it's for the best. See, you're not speaking to me. Jenny, I am speaking. Sometimes there is just nothing to say. Not your fault, though, Jack. You weren't to know. I mean, what would it have cost him to tell me we weren't insured? But he's not bothered if a neighbour gets summons. It's nowt to him, is he it? He don't know the meaning of the word neighbour, that fella. You're right, Al. I, all in all, you deserve one another. Yeah, but it's a mean trick, I'm though, sorry, isn't it? Like... I mean, he did say you could ride it, Jack. It's not as if he just, like, took it, is it? Well, then I never rode it, if I'd have known. Never in a million years, Sally. Would you not, would... Jack? Hi. Hi. Oh. So? This is where you go to slag people off then, isn't it, eh? Yeah, well, he wasn't saying anything that wasn't true. How did you know, sweetheart? Anyway, I heard you'd taken advice to shut it. I have, yes. Yeah, well, if I was you, I'd act on it, Jack, uh, look, right let's now. let's not get heated, eh? Hey, who's getting heated? You know where I've been today, Jack? No comment. I went to see a solicitor. I'll tell you something else. You know the advice you get from a solicitor? It's loads better than the advice you get from a trainee supermarket manager. That? Yeah? The police are here. See what a word. Oh, do they not? Right then. You're coming with me, Jackal. What about me burgers? No comment. Oh, oh. You see, Betty, what Alec can't see yeah. and won't see is, is it's the end. Mm. I mean, if by some miracle Yankees is a success, he'd never stand the pace. If it's a failure, It'd be us to blame. Mm. The brewery would have us out before we could say no. His head's in sound, no mistake. I mean, he's not right for a young pub, is he? Oh, well, time will tell him mm. better if we can. Ta-ra, ta Oh, oh, oh hey, the wanderer returns. That's what you call timing, is that? Thank you. What have you been? I've been to see Nigel Ridley. How did you step? No, Bet, I haven't. I've cancelled the refurbishment. You what? Yes, he, he took it very well, actually, didn't I, Joel? Yeah. I told him exactly how you felt, and he was entirely understanding. He said he'd never force us into anything against our will. Are you being serious? A categoric reassurance you can forget you ever heard the word Yankees. Oh, you've done right, Alec. You have, love. Hey, Alec. Your little belter. It's the best thing you've done in years. I missed out on a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got two lads. How old are you? Fifteen. Fifteen. Well, I remember what I was like at fifteen, and I'll bet you were the same. They need an example. They see adults behaving like idiots, they do the same, don't you? Uh, I don't know. Well, I do. And at fifteen, your idea of a joyride isn't pottering around the back streets with the wife on the pillion, is it? You want to go out and kill yourself, don't you? And maybe a few others while you're at it. Look, don't worry, I won't let them get on it. Be over my dead body if they do. And what about you? Are you going to give him instructions in how to ride a bike without tax, MOT and insurance? No, I won't do that, no. No? No. Good. And you? Are you going to try and sneak it out on the road when the old man's not looking? I'll be down on you like a ton of bricks. Right. Well, we get no joy from prosecuting idiots. So this time, we're not pressing charges. Next time, we throw the book at you. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks very much. Look, I'm sorry, it won't happen again. It won't. We're getting shut of it as soon as we can. Oh, you're joking. It's going. No argument. Right. Well, uh, if you're done with me, I'll be off then. I'm done with you. Right, well, well thanks again then. <clears throat> I, uh, I wouldn't have a motorbike around when you've got teenage lads in the house. We're not going to. It's a nice bike, though. <laughs> yeah, it is. It was a nice bike. Could I, uh, have another look? Yeah, sure, of course you can. Come through. I used to have an old Norton. Really? What sort? Dominator, 500cc. Oh, beautiful. When was the police cat on the street? Looking for girls who aren't doing their own work. Uh -huh. <laughs> there you are. What did I tell you? Better get your books out quick. Yeah? I rang this morning. You're the estate agent? Yes. You better come in. Thanks. Through. Thanks. Hello there. Hiya. Sit down. Thanks. Now, uh, 
What's all this about? As I said on the phone, we've had an offer for your house. Why? At this stage, I'm not really prepared to say. It doesn't make any sense. No, perhaps not. But I assure you, it's a genuine offer. Well, I'm very sorry, but I'm just not interested. I'm, I've got no reason to move. We're perfectly happy here. Oh, of course. The offer anticipated that, in fact. We've been instructed to offer £5,000 above the valuation. I'd estimate it to be around twenty-five. So, effectively, you're being offered £30,000. Hey, oh, look who's there. Hey, yeah. All right. All right. Hey, get him a drink, Jack. You know, show us no our feelings. Right, Jim, what are you having? That's very kind of you. will have a pint of your butter, please. And you look. Half a bit of please, Jack. Uh, right. Hey, uh, look at that couple, aren't it? Letting us off. It shows that they're not all tour around, right, have they? Yeah. Hey, I'll tell you what, though, Jim. How's about me and you splitting the tax and insurance? You know, like a joint ownership. You know, like they would do with racehorses. Yeah, but it's gone, Jack. What's gone? The bike. I got rid of it. Oh, blimey, that was a bit previous, wasn't it? I know the fella ticked us off, but he's only a ticket that serious. Yeah, it's for the best, really. The lads are really cut up about it. Anyway, we don't have to get helmets, do we? I don't have to put an helmet over my girl, <laughs> I don't think you did the right thing there, kid. I don't think you did the right thing at all. Worth a few bob, that bike. Well, not that much now. I mean, I only got 800 for it. Hey? 800? Yeah, 800. See, just shows you the police aren't all bad, are they? It was him that bought it. Turns out he's an enthusiast. Yeah, well, you're paying for them drinks. Sure. Claire! Hi. Did you have a good time? It was all right. Tom was there. Oh, yeah. And? No, look, he went with Susan Rollinson. Mmm, yummy. Hmm? I am shattered. Do you want to drink? Someone been smoking? Oh, yeah. Who? Rod. Rod Whitworth? Yes. Flick, how many times do I have to say it? Jenny, he's got nowhere else to go. I don't care if he hasn't got anywhere else to go. He's not stopping here. Hi, Jenny.